Creative Handbook with your host Cassandra Lauren Gordon and I'm here with Angle Queen what's popping y'all can you say it again because I think it just cut out a little bit I'm here with Jungle Queen what's popping y'all <laughs> <laughs> okay so how would you describe your creative practice Mm, it's a bit of everything so I do like 3D design I like fashion I like music so I like to be involved in any creative aspect you know kind of evolve my creative heritage and trying to get all the elements to absorb it to kind of showcase what Jungle Queen is all about cool but I know that artists don't want to be put into one box but if you could describe your creative heritage in one word what would it be Creative directing. Creative directing, perfect. All right. So before we get into all of the creativeness, what you do, we just ask do some fire questions so the BCH community gets to know you, how you are, check that you're a human being, all that jazz. Okay. Do you like toast or cereal? Cereal. Why? It's nice childhood memories, you know, I can't lie, that nice cereal, you know, them TV adverts, you're like, oh, Cocoa Pops. <laughs> okay, I hear you. Blue or green? Green. Why? Nature, I love the green leaves and that's my favourite colour. My hair was green before, if you caught me last week, it was green, but yeah, I'm green all the way. Braids or twists? Braids. Why? Yeah. I feel like it's because I always used to do my own hair and I always like to do braids. So kind of stuck with me. Had a different process of like days where I just do braids and I look horrible. And then I learned how to understand my hair texture. And then um, <laughs> so how did you braids. learn? How Because I'm trying to learn how to braid and it's killing me. That so. is the mirror. <laughs> Going like this, section it, having like different plaits and just doing the section first and then get like the crochet needle to get the braid inside and get a neat plait. Before it used to look messy. I'd even know you have to like pull out the hair. My hair would just be hella, you call it, just all over the place. But <laughs> a good friend told me, I said, don't do that. <laughs> Understood. I'm going to try it over Christmas. I, have, I just want to do well, do my hair in corn, cornrows, the simple cornrows. Mm. And I'm just going to do my, I don't know how I'm going to do it. i got two weeks. If I give myself two weeks, that's, I just got to do it. Just got to do it. Okay, cool. The tube or the bus? Pardon? The tube or the bus? <laughs> that would like a Ferrari for me. Bus. Why the bus? I feel like I like sitting on the top of the bus, you know, like, because you can, cause I like sp spotting people's interiors, you know, like looking at people's houses. I'm not, I'm not a creep. Well, I find it interesting to see how different people are living, how their space looks like. It's kind of, it's kind of give me a kind of way to kind of understand what the, the consumer likes to see in their space. I've seen a lot of minimalist spaces and I see some places that like have really funky stuff out of place. And I'm like, oh, it's nice. Something I can think about when I'm creating something. Okay. Cushions or pillows? Cushions. Wow. I don't know. I think it's the name. Cushions. It just sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Android or Apple? Apple all the way, I can't lie. Why? Why? Oh, yeah. Because, you know, like, I had an Android, you know, Android is not it. Like, iPhone is just grown with me, like, so it's just, and the picture quality. No okay. Trying to look nice, but camera, chase. <laughs> okay. Okay, I hear you. Okay, so thank you for, oh, yeah, there's one thing I'm going to ask you. So what advice would you give to your 20-year-old self? Hmm. Two years ago. Well, hmm. I would say stay in school, focus, and just be creative. Don't let any like lecturer tell you that you can't do it. Like some lecturers out here giving you criticism that makes you feel like you can't do your project the way you feel like you should do it, that like you're not good enough. You feel like just do what you gotta do. If you're creative, you're creative. Just do what you gotta do and do the research. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm gonna talk about um, the research later because in creative direction, which is quite important. So I don't know if I said it before, but you, um, you do lots of things in your creative practice. Um, you kind of, I made you choose to put, it's like creative direction, but you do many things. So let's start with what you're working on right now. What projects are you working on right, right now? 
I'm working on a free project right now at the top of my head. So I'm working on my EP, on my music. Um, just trying to get all the songs that I'm trying to put on my first album out there for you guys to hear. Um, also working on my collection. I'm trying to, I have one collection already, but I want to expand it and experiment more with sewing because I now got a sewing machine. So now I'm just going to learn how to sew properly than just painting on garments. I just want to kind of elaborate how you can create pieces with different mediums. Um, the other stuff I'm doing, I'm also doing some interior set design stuff, but it's just personal kind of um, projects. It's just some rough sketches. And yeah, and I'm also trying to think about my third year project and how I'm going to create it. I have this idea in mind, I'm not going to say it, but it's to do with a window, but when, you, when I'm done with the design, it will be showcased. Okay, I'm in, I'm in suspense, so waiting yeah. for next year. So next year's gonna be a big year. So when you say interior set design, are you just thinking of how you use space or you talk about exhibitions or installations? Like what do you mean um, where you see your creative direction there? I feel like it's creating an experience, depending on what the brand or whatever I'm working on, depending on who the consumer is, what they want to see, if it's maybe an AI design, VR or something, to give the audience something to kind of engage with, like, wow, this is so cool, you know? Like, um, my favorite um, artist, they're Japanese, I mean Japanese, it's called um, Team Lab, and they do these green designs, so cool, and it's like really creative, spaces with a lot of colors and lights like some pieces of sort of like flowers some projection mapping it's really cool and it kind of had me thinking i gotta go into the coding industry like <laughs> they they really like inspired me like yo the colors it's phenomenal like spaces full of screens and just color everywhere so it's really immersive spaces like that wow so you see so research is so important isn't it sometimes um Indeed you know, see myself sometimes as a creative director, I'm just like, oh, where's my references? How do I <laughs> yeah. translate these ideas and all these kind of mood boards and ideas into a physical, tangible thing? So mm. can, you, can you walk me through your process if you're doing some creative direction for your, I don't know, for your music, for what, whatever project, what is the method? Get it from, a, from, mm. from concept to actually the product mind maps because i feel like people like me who are creative you have a lot of ideas and you have to think how am i going to put all these ideas down because you'd be like oh i want to do this do this do that but you have to pinpoint what it is you're trying to do so if you write, have a mind map you can write down all your ideas and then you can do like step one i'm going to do the research step two step three and then you know how to move forward because i feel like a lot of people get stuck with their creative like when they, you are you want to create something and you get stuck because you have not really planned the next steps so you kind of get stuck, you're like, well, what do I do now? I'm now stuck, I want to do this, but how am I gonna do it? And it's also good to kind of have, go to people and ask them for what you think, like let them have a look over your work and they will see if your, your, your idea might be too complex and maybe they won't even understand your idea. So maybe they can give you some feedback for you to kind of think about and come back. And then, and I feel like you learn more from peers anyway, more than you learn from your lecturers because, your peers will give you a different opinion than your lecturers, but it depends how you work, depending on how you, you like your feedback. You can take criticism. <laughs> Some people can't. Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. So you do, I'm hearing the research. I'm hearing that you put the mind maps. I'm hearing that you put the project plan together. So you have your product plan. You get some, you get some, um, people giving advice or give their opinions and you mm -hmm. distill it. So you distill it and you know, you're, you're ready to go. So when you're ready to go on the day or while you're doing it, what do you do next to get your idea into realization? It's, if I'm doing it on my own, it's better to have a team, but if you have, you're doing it on your own, you have to like plan the beginning and the end. It's like writing the story. So for example, when I did the shoot for my collection, um there was certain things that went left on the day but i had to improvise and with most things you plan you always at the end have to improvise because the plan is just a rough guidance but when you get to the actual stage you just have to perform so um you whatever you have in mind everything you plan you do it but there's certain things that might not go to plan so what do you do you just have to make things meet like you just gotta make it work out at the end of the day 
Have your rough guide, but be fluid when things might go yeah. right or Accept wrong. Accept situation how it goes. You can't always be in control, but as a creative, there's always problem solving that you have that it's gonna come in your way that you have to solve problems. So as a designer, I've understood that and just like even if things don't work out the way you want it, just take it, learn from it. Because from every project that you do, you're gonna learn from the mistakes you've made. No one is perfect. But once you've done it for many years, you have more experience and it makes you more comf comf confident, yeah. Okay. So it's interesting what you said there um, about planning and all that kind of things. But what I'm really interested to, when you do your, 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 your project and, or the, and being a problem solver, because I think that is the number one skill. So how can you make something if you know for in in this bch community how can you do things on limited budgets because sometimes i struggle I'm like i need this i need that i need this and sometimes i feel sometimes i think about the money first and that kind of hinders the creativity so how do you get your desired results but with a very creative limited budget you just have to be creative like well, most of my pieces that i source i sourced them um, uh, I try to get free products or so, like some of my clothing I just either go to charity shops see like clothing that can upcycle but for a low budget because I know this is my budget let me not overkill and go to a Dior and get, get myself a t-shirt because I just one t-shirt to design okay depending who your target audience is and what you're trying to design but if you're trying to design something on a low budget there's always ways there's funding there's like people that could help you know you can always ask for help but for what I have done I just go uh, to like places that I know that can help me out like the uni they have a lot of um, recyclable stuff that you can reuse so they can give you material so there's always places you can go or most of my canvases that I paint on I find them on the streets so it just depends how creative you are like you can always upcycle and repurpose stuff it's just how how you view things if you have too much pride and you can pick up an old canvas from the street that's you <laughs> i will make it look like a nice piece of art afterwards <laughs> before and after <laughs> yeah i hear you i hear you and another thing i was going to ask you so which i'm trying to do more of more collaborations because i thought i could do things myself mm. and, there's, and there's limits sometimes but how do you collaborate how do you just get people on board and involved in your projects and just, yeah like what's your tactics usually like I try to create a group chat or like a zoom meeting and explain to people what my idea is about but what I've noticed is that a lot of people are like like we are talking right now they would just be listening but they're not really contributing so it's understanding who you're trying to work with and understanding people some people don't have the same vision as you I've started a lot of collectives and I still don't have a collective right now I'm still looking for people who have the same vision as me. I have a lot of plans and ideas that I want to create for next year, but I don't have a team. So for me, it's hard like to find an actual team to work with because it's not as if there is a platform where you can like, I'm looking for a team. Who is a creative in the area, you know? Who can create this, you know? Um, so something that we actually need to create is like a maybe a space or, where people can like have like a sign on sheet. This is a project that person's trying to be on. You want to get involved you know it would help people to actually complete their um, pro projects because mm -hmm. there's a lot of unfinished projects so many good ideas but they're not finished and it's like there's no funding even to get funding from the art council you have to fulfill out this big sheet and you have to have and, and, and they want you to collaborate <laughs> they want you to have 10 million people endorsing you so how do you get that how do you exactly. increase that social capital how do you get people on board but you seem to get people on board so what yeah, but they don't stick things? around too long. <laughs> they don't stick along, around too long. And I feel like there's like the way you go about it. Um, I feel like people don't want to do stuff for free. <laughs> That's actually it. People want to get paid. And if you get funding from the art council, then you can pay people. Because as a student, how can you pay? Like, I'm not getting paid. So how am I going to pay someone else if I'm not getting paid? You know? So I feel like maybe creating a community where people are, okay, building a portfolio, for a certain project and just get them involved so you can build your portfolio. It's not for the money game, but it's skill share because we're sharing skills. Maybe something I know, you want to know, and I'll give you my skill and you give me yours. And that's a fair trade because I last for a long time. It's a lifetime skill, you know? Um, but it depends on the person characteristics. 
Okay, I hear you. So it's just it, what I'm learning in my life is just like meeting pe meeting people informally and just seeing there's a vibe because sometimes you see you know you think you know people but you only know people when you work with them and especially when money's not attached you can see mm -hmm. you know obviously if money's not attached you can't have the same expectations as someone you're paying because someone paid they'll, they'll, they'll prioritize but you see if people are committed how they are people flexible um do they have your back are they very supportive are they you know, when people are learning, are they supportive in people's growth? You know, you, you find these things out um, the harsh way. And you rather find it on the harsh way while you're learning for free. Well, mm. you do, when you get a big commission or you've got a project and you, you, you know, messed up your money. So, you know, I'm learning when I'm doing these free projects or, you know, how people are and making sure that you're in alignment. I think you're right. Mm. Vision and your mm. working style, you have to be in alignment. You have to. You can't just... Do everything remotely you have yeah. to make sure the working style and your vision matches mm. the people who are on your team because mm. it can not go well it can break a whole idea vision that you're planning it could have been that one million idea with money my one million pound idea because you don't have the right people they would drag you down so it's very true very true okay so let's do something positive but you do find right people when you do do <laughs> projects Okay, so let's talk about first your music. So how, describe it. Describe your music and how did you get into it? Um, I was like singing, it's something I always wanted to do. Um, I was like, always, and like, when I started singing, my was like, I sound like a bang cat. And I was like, oh, sh but then I proved. And like, I just kept going, I just like, I didn't stop. So now I got to a point where I'm like, ooh. I like this sound and especially with people who have a unique voice and your voice does not sound like everyone else you kind of feel kind of afraid to sing in front of people because you feel like people have never heard this kind of sound before How, will people like it will people be like oh oh I don't really like it it's not really my style because I even like when I record a song and I give it to my friends to listen to you like oh I like it and some people like no it's not my style and you're like hmm how am I supposed to go about it when I give it to a stranger they're like oh my is this on Spotify? <laughs> uh, it's, it's just you get different reactions. It's just you just have to keep on going. Just do not care. It's, just do it because you love doing the music. Absolutely, absolutely. And also, I feel like back in my younger days, I thought I could sing, and I think I wish I took it on more seriously in my teen years or when I was in my early twenties because I thought. I used to have this kind of all of nothing approach, meaning like if I didn't sound like Beyonce, basically I can't sing. And I think for black women sometimes you have to do the, uh, the big powerhouse voices. You can't have a delicate voice or people might think, but you're not a strong singer. There's like this box of what a black mm. woman voice has to be a certain soulful kind of thing. Mm. And I didn't really fit into that. And people didn't understand it. Mm. So, um, yeah, you inspire me. Maybe I should take up singing again. Maybe I should yeah. try yeah. and just improve. There's, there's this artist. She's a olden days uh, artist. I just typed my name into Google, Esther Phillips. You know, and there's this artist, a jazz singer. Her name is Esther Phillips as well. And her singing style is really like back in the days, old and rush, really strange sounding. But it's it was really she was loved back in the days for that sound. It's so different but she was an amazing jazz singer and her birthday is like one day after mine so I was like I feel a connection <laughs> I'm like wow this is something I should get inspired with and just keep going because if she made it what's what's, what's going to stop me from making it if I love doing what I do you know cool and we talked about your design fashion business and we talk about one your aspirations of having pop-up shops you're actually in a pop your your work is actually in a pop-up shop and never fade isn't it in, in soho in that concept store it didn't work out i mean oh yeah oh. so really wanted it but um well at least you got into like a central london pop-up store so at least you got to try and do that and yeah uh, I just did an event with them where I painted on a jacket and yeah, it got sold. Yeah. There you nice. go. There's a silver lining. Something positive happened. So we just <laughs> on that positive note <laughs> and we'll move on. Yeah. So it, it's, it's just interesting, like, I don't know, don't know you that well, but being like a free spirit, very creative, you're really honing in your craft and just and just improving. But as to me, 
like sometimes I feel like always talking about money like how am I going to survive how am I going to do this so what is your process of turning things into a business because creatives it's nice to create create all day but we need to eat and you know mm. have shelter and pay for our mm. tools, pay for studios like where you're your studio now so oh. how do you survive or thrive and um, you know making thing you know just you know with your art it's not easy um especially finding and understanding where you can sell your stuff on what platforms to sell it um i've tried having my own website for my pieces on but i realized a lot of people don't go and uh buy my pieces because online people especially with paintings on garments like you know it's upcycled you want to feel the material is it going to stay on so i have realized that people want to see it more in person so for next year i'm planning to do a pop-up store for people to come through and actually experience my clothing and I'm also kind of do the interior space so you can have an experience when you come to see my collections um yeah so I feel like it is it's not easy but if you have a um there's always ways you can go around you can do a little work I, I do security so there's certain things you just have you have to hustle there's nothing coming nothing comes for free as especially as a creative like not all the time you won't make money from your creative outlets all the time but you have to do something on the side and just plan how you're going to do it because that's what I'm learning right now start a business it seems like oh glorious but there's a lot of work that goes into it <laughs> And yeah, having good positive people around you helps you to kind of keep the spirit going. I hear you change like positive people environment. Um, yeah. I'm trying to my own little way, like how I met you at an event, like try to go to more like like-minded people and events, yeah. and because it just feeds into your soul when you meet people who are like you. Because <laughs> for me, for so many years, you know, I had people who didn't understand me weren't creative mm. and it kind of died like it hindered my creative ability so yeah I, I do you know making sure so, your your environment is tight because mm. there's mm. a lot of stuff in the world yes and, yes <laughs> I keep my circle really close only the people who truly know me know me but um I had like close friends back in the days and we were like peas in a pod but here we are, we're not friends anymore. And I just feel like as you're growing and you're evolving into who you're trying to be, into that woman, you know, like um, you, as you're moving up and up the ladder, you you meet more people who have the same mentality as you. And these are people you're supposed to meet with. My parents always tell me, if you stay with people who are, you were with before, they might not be the people that's supposed to help you grow. There's people that you meet that will help you grow because they, they will shape in your vision. For, for what you're supposed to be doing because I feel like everything it's like a spiritual kind of thing you know you kind of meet the people that are supposed to help you get to where you're supposed to go like today some dope stuff happened I I was working with this producer and I was just on my phone writing some lyrics I was like I'm trying to look for his number and I couldn't find it and I was working and I, I saw him on the road I'm like ah oh. Thomas, I just opening. Like, how did I, I was looking for your number? I forgot your name and everything. I couldn't find you. And then you appear right in front of me. So I feel like things happen for a reason. So you just keep on working on what you're trying to do and everything will fit, fall into place. Amazing. No, no, I just find it very in, in, inspirational because as you said, like some people can talk, like you see, I don't know, I'll make it up like Kanye's or Beyonce. It all looks glamorous on Instagram. I'm like, mm, I'm taking pics, but it's hard work it, you know honing your craft doing all the business stuff paying your taxes all of those stuff and you have to do it and sometimes on a very limited budget because you know mm. I don't know if you know but I'm a jeweler so I'm just like I want to do these designs in gold <laughs> and you carry and diamonds I'm like I have to get the money and hustle first and then mm. I can do it and um it's just that cycle until it all blows up so yeah just having that faith um in getting there so, Girl, I love, love your jewelry. Like, love. <laughs> it's so really amazing. amazing. Well done. So, having your vision, where mm. do you think you want to be in three years' time? Mm. Definitely would have started, started paying off my mortgage, you know, sorry. <laughs> trying to get my own place. Um, definitely like having my business, like have it kickstarted and doing like workshop. I would have already traveled to Nigeria um because that's where I'm from because I've never been to Africa so that's mm -hmm. on my to-do list um 
yeah, also going to Berlin, do pop-up shops, just traveling around, doing pop-up stores, literally, that's it. Pop-up stores, so tell pop-up more important about pop because I've done pop-up stores, very small, 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 <laughs> and I mean small, <laughs> small. Uh, pop-up mm-hmm. gallery stuff when I first started doing jewelry and it was hard work not taking away from your dream never will but what I'm trying to say to you have you got any ideas of bringing the foot forward because your mm-hmm. friends say they come and then they come but they don't buy your stuff so how do you connect to your talk tar- um, any ideas to get to your target market audience to come out their house and walk and look at make stuff? it you got to make it Instagrammable. You need to make, the shop needs to make it look like people can take pictures in there and post it on the gram. Because everything is about social media nowadays. If you're going to create something, you need to make sure you know that people need to be able to be like, Chase, ooh, I'm here right now representing for my peeps, for my followers. So we need to create something that makes people feel like I can be inclusive and kind of draw them in. For me, like when I want to do, because I, I, I started as a fine artist, I was thinking of creating like big canvases and like replicating a store, but just in the middle of the street. And that's something you won't really see. But I also noticed that there's a lot of steps you have to get uh, permission by the council and all these other stuff and just not interfere with the foot flow of the pavement. So there's something I have been thinking about to mm. do. Um, yeah, because there's a little bit of production running and music videos behind the scenes. And I've seen how they recreate like a room with big canvases and it looked like a room and they shoot it and in the video it looks like you're in a room. I'm like, that's a sick idea for a pop up store. Just have like canvases and make it like a store and have this kind of experience that people be thinking they're actually in a store, but they look left, it's just the streets. <laughs> like functional spaces like that. Oh, no, because I, I just feel like sometimes it's hard online to do stuff. Um, recently, um, I put my stuff in a concept store um, in central London. It's a pop-up store called Janet List, which creates the leading curated space for Black and people um, of colour, um, women, stuff. So in this pop-up space, there's just everything's by Black women, basically. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, it's um, in Soho. So yeah, it's interesting. So I'm just like, mm, the physical, you know, things online is different, but I really need to think about different ways to get people to touch and see the jewelry and mm-hmm. uh, appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so you make you inspire me of thinking about the experience. How can I mm-hmm. translate from social media? To do, do they do conventions like for jewelry? Like, con- like actually, they, do they do artist conventions? Like, I know they do Comic Con, they do all this, but they do artists like. They, you know, I don't know about art. This is what I need to research. Probably artist stuff. I know I usually do jewelry trade trade shows, and that hasn't really been working for me. I tried one recently, and it's just industry people, and like industry people don't buy. It's nice to get press, but mm. I like, I'd rather take sales than press any day. So <laughs> I need to really rethink about what's my audience. Mm and how to reach be where my audience is and get feedback and get them to you know feel and touch and buy you know and get my name around so have, have you tried like giving like musicians influencers your stuff i'm trying so i am um, some influencers like my stuff i really want to get into musicians to be mm. honest um, because I love music, you know, I interview a few, lot of music artists and stuff like that. So yeah, that's my next step. If you know any music artists, you know, let me know. Yeah, okay. I will slide you some people I've met. Yeah, definitely. That'd be super. Um, so we talked about you where your vision, where you want to be, the puppet experience. We talked about your music. When are you dropping your EP? Hopefully next year. But hopefully before the ending of next year, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to create, because I there's, because I'm trying to add my mom's dialect. I, I, she speaks Yoruba and I'm trying to get the twang in the music as well. So it's, it's still a lot of speaking and understanding the lyrics and kind of pronunciations. Um, but yeah, it's, it's getting, it's getting there. Uh, I have like, genre? what type of genre? If you I, like, to- I like, I like Afrobeats. I like slow kind of nice dancey vibe chill lo-fi I like chill vibe my 
my character is chill, man. No, no, what how large is chill vibe. That kind of that's kind of what I'm trying to bring people with my kind of voice and style. So what comes and, first, the lyrics or the production? How does it work for you to do your EP? Um, so I've written most of my lyrics. Um, it's just now I need to meet my producer and record it. Because I have demo versions of most of my songs, but I just need to get it mixed and mastered, mixed and mastered, mixed and mastered. Yeah. Understood, understood. Look, okay. a lot of things that goes behind it, and you have to like memorize your lyrics and all that before you can even. And do you have like a creative concept, like for your album cover, how you're going to style it, when you're going to put it on? Like, do you have the creative direction, mm -hmm. you know, the physical stuff for your album? Yeah, I, mean, I have like this image that I, I, um, that my friend took, and it looks like like an an olden days Nigerian kind of portrait. So I'm kind of put that and kind of, because I do graphics as well. I can just do the little graphic design, add some touches. Oh, so you do graphic design as well? I basically do anything. Anything you ask me to do, I'll try and learn it, master it and do it for you. I'm just trying to be a jack of all trades and just trying to master all types of art. Because I feel like I love the Bauhaus concept. The fact that you used to teach people if you do design, they teach you mainly all design practice, art practice. So you have these skills because just focusing on one skill, I don't think it's enough. Because what if you wake up one day and you say, I don't want to be an architect anymore. I want to be something else. And how can you switch it if you have to relearn a new skill and start from the beginning? If you already had your skill, you can wake up and be like, okay, today I want to do something else. You know, it's not always having to stick to one kind of path of life, you know? Understandable. That is so good. Thank you for sharing that. I really do appreciate that because it's very important to, you know, invest in, 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 in your skills and work, work hard on it, you know, and know which ones to do. So which do you think is the strongest, you think, of your skill set? Design. Like, Design. I'm really good. When people, some people think in words, I think in images. I have a clear... I um, have good ideas, very good ideas. And just having to recreate it in reality, that's the next step. So I have a lot of ideas, but now understanding how to create it uh, and problem solve these issues, these ideas into reality. So, yeah. So where, like do you do your, so where do you do your research? I know it sounds a bit weird. So how do you, so you have your images, your mm -hmm. reference, where do you seek them? How do you collect them and how do you visual how do you visually produce like a mood board or concept board or something? Uh, well, I if I, I so if I had like an idea and I came up, I do a sketch of something, I'm like, oh, it's something I want to create. Then I look at something similar to it. So like maybe for example, a window, I say, how was the window constructed? And I'm trying to understand the fundamental of how it's been made and then kind of shaping it around my idea, how I gonna create that. And if I have two projects that's hyperlated together, I look at how these both product, projects uh, products are made and then I kind of fuse them together and make it into one. Wow, so it's a different skill and you yeah. just put different things together. Okay, cool. yeah. So um, my last thing what I usually ask is how, well, no, actually, what was like the biggest compliment or testimonial someone said about your work? Um, it's the way I work. Like, um, like my lecture and foundation was like, the way you work is so unique do not stop it don't don't change it don't it's a different way of working because the way I work I rather when I have an idea or something I just create something I just go and just cut out whatever thing and I make something I'm like oh it's cool let's create that in a free bigger version scale so I just like to go straight to the making because I have that vision of what I really want to do and I just go and make it and he said the way I work is so unique that I should continue doing it that way Oh, it's you know sometimes people always think about the end result but it's about the process and how you document that and what you learn from that mm. that's where the learning is and that's mm. where you know yeah okay cool well, that's really helpful to know sometimes I work backwards sometimes I work forward you know you gotta <laughs> find a balance of how you can work sometimes you're just like okay this is a rough idea of what I want to create and then I work backwards how can I create it in a bigger scale understood understood I was going to ask you as well. So, how can people find all of your creative endeavors? What are the best ways to find you and connect with you and buy from you? Ben? Instagram, but I don't have all my work up there. I'm still posting. I still keep some of my stuff reserved. 
I'm just gonna post them bit by bit. I have loads of paintings at home and I feel like I just wanna get rid of them. It's just too many. So I'm gonna start posting It's them. Christmas now, it's getting Christmas yeah. money, you know, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, I like abstract art, like abstract faces and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll be posting that on my Instagram. My Instagram is um, jungle underscore queen. So J-U-N-G-E-L underscore queen. Yeah. Why? Why didn't I have to ask you? Why the name Jungle Queen? Um, I feel because I come from Germany and I come from like the like from the countryside, and it was just full of like nature, and I feel like that was like my safe haven. And until I came here, and I feel like London is more of like this hectic, loud. You have to be working. Everyone's just focused. And it's like a concrete jungle, and my name is Queen. So I feel like I came into the jungle, and my name is Queen. So I just put it together jungle queen but the e i was switched because it was a typo i'm dyslexic and i didn't realize it until someone called me out and i was like oh well, i like it jungle jungle queen <laughs> there you go it works well okay thank you so much i thank hope you people, for having me no problem i'm sure people can connect with you we're gonna see where you're going i'm so interested in the pop-up vibes and um, you know because yeah because I know it's COVID times, but people really want an experience. Why are we coming out of our house? You can't just go to a normal retail experience and like, here's some bright lights and here's some clothes. People want to feel something, people want to share it. So it's about creating those kind of spaces um, mm. and how to do that. That's really helpful. Yeah, that's why I like creating customized pieces. I feel like for, especially for fashion, something doesn't always have to like mass produce, like the same thing and everyone's going to be wearing the same thing I feel like it's like a bit robotic for me like I like to look different from people like maybe like this reason why my brand is going to be so diverse it's only be one of this item there's not going to be a second one so yeah understood understood mm. okay cool so this is the end of the podcast please connect Thank you. us you know what to do you know what to do <laughs> and see you next time on the Black Rain Handbook Podcast <laughs>